Quest 3 is finally here and it's time to dive in. Quest 2, launched three years ago, was undoubtedly a VR phenomenon, selling over 20 million units. But this year's Quest 3 not only surpasses the Quest Pro in performance, but also outshines other headsets in its price range. But hold on a second. While Quest 2 was groundbreaking in its time, VR hasn't yet become as mainstream as smartphones or gaming consoles. So is VR really the future? After experiencing Quest 3, the answer to this question has become clear. So today, we're going to check out what this fantastic bang for your buck VR headset can do and discuss where the future of VR might be headed. Quest 3's major upgrade isn't in the screen, but the lenses. The screen remains an LCD with similar color and contrast, and a refresh rate of 90Hz to 120Hz. However, the lens upgrade is significant. They've replaced the old Fresnel lenses with pancake lenses, eliminating issues like glare and chromatic aberration, offering clear and sharp visuals. The sweet spot has also expanded. The field of view is now around 108 degrees horizontally and 99 degrees vertically, a notable improvement over Quest 2 and slightly better than Pico 4. Image quality is crucial for a VR headset, and Quest 3 has gone from just okay in the second generation to the best of its class, but the most significant improvement is in its performance. Quest 3 is a standalone VR headset, meaning it doesn't require a PC or any other devices to run. Its performance depends on its hardware, and Quest 3's hardware has evolved significantly. With the new Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip and 8GB of RAM, performance has nearly doubled. Everything feels incredibly responsive, making navigation a breeze. Gaming in particular benefits greatly. Many Quest 2 games have received dedicated upgrades for Quest 3. Titles like S Fire 2 and The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners have seen substantial improvements in textures, lighting, and resolution, rivaling the jump from PS4 to PS5. Red Matter 2 is a standout example, offering richer visuals and more realistic dynamic shadows, enhancing overall immersion. Streaming Steam VR games also shines on Quest 3, thanks to its Wi-Fi 6E support. This reclaims Quest 3's position as my go-to PC VR headset. Quest 3 offers improved comfort with better weight distribution. Thanks to the pancake lenses, it's slimmer and closer to your face. While it's 12 grams heavier, it feels gentler on the neck. The head straps have been upgraded from 1 to 2, but they're not a huge improvement and can sometimes snag hair. Consider third-party head straps for added comfort. Adjusting IPD is now effortless with a handy knob, offering a wide range of settings from 58 to 70. You can also adjust the depth of the face mask, a clever feature. Controller-wise, they've done away with the circular Bye. rings. Tracking remains excellent, and the vibrations are smoother. But the most fundamental change in Quest 3 is its cameras. The three alien eye-like pill-shaped lenses house two infrared cameras, two 4-megapixel color cameras, and a depth sensor. Together with the two side cameras, that's a total of six cameras and a depth sensor. They provide groundbreaking see-through visuals and responsive hand tracking. The image quality when using these cameras is impressive. You can discern your surroundings, read text on screens, and the hand tracking is accurate and responsive. After some practice, it's not much different from using controllers. Overall, it's moved beyond being a gimmick to offer a more natural way to interact in your daily use. Quest 3 brings significant hardware improvements, making it the ideal choice for VR apps or games. But even as an early adopter, I often wonder, why am I still an early adopter after three years? The core issue is that VR experiences haven't advanced in parallel with hardware. Even with Quest 3's power, it hasn't brought any exclusive killer apps. It's limited to continually improving existing experiences. Thinking back to why I got into VR in the first place, game like Half-Life Alex, I expected more of these high-quality VR games as hardware improved, but that expectation has largely gone unmet. A hardware device needs a strong software ecosystem to be appealing to consumers. On the other hand, it requires a substantial user base to incentivize developers effectively. This chicken and egg situation persists even after Meta sold over 20 million Quest 2 units, with few developers willing to create exclusive content. After experiencing the most powerful and user-friendly VR headsets, I've concluded that VR might not have a future. The real near future could be mixed reality. Now, MR and AR might sound Sound similar. But when we say MR, we're specifically talking about using cameras to capture reality and show contents on the screen, like what the Vision Pro does. The previous Quest Pro and Pico 4 could do this to some extent, but they couldn't understand real-world objects. This meant that the virtual objects cannot interact with the real world, which could break the illusion. But Quest 3 changes that with its depth sensor. It scans your surroundings and creates a detailed map with depth and volume. 
It outlines surfaces, like walls, sofas, tables, and even plush toys, down to their curves, just like this Figment XR app. Those blue blobs represent the 3D map of the entire room that Quest 3 has created using its depth sensor. It's decently accurate. Virtual objects can sit near the edge of your couch, fall, roll, and bounce around. This MR application shows us how well the headset understands the depth of your surroundings, when virtual objects can interact realistically with real-world objects, making the virtual and real worlds feel like one. And this is also where the Vision Pro is placing its bet. Of course, there are differences between Quest 3 and the $3,500 Vision Pro. Some visual pass-through latency and slight wobble with close object. Gestural interaction isn't as smooth as eye tracking. VR gaming from 2016 till now has made progress, but it's not yet mainstream. It's a bit like 3D TVs. Remember those? They came with 3D glasses in the early 2010s, but didn't catch on due to content scarcity, high prices, inconvenience, and costly 3D content. The most popular VR games are like arcade games, short runs that get you moving. Meta has found it tough to convince top-tier developers to create AAA VR games for them. So MR might indeed be the way forward. In MR, most of the time, we're still viewing 2D content and working with 2D interfaces. It's just that our screens are now all different sizes and numbers. I tried an Office app that I'd tried with Quest Pro before. The picture wasn't super sharp and there were a few software bugs. The headset felt a bit stuffy and pressed against my face a bit, but apart from these issues, it was immersive. And here's something fascinating I noticed. I left the virtual window in place, went to get water, and when I went back, the virtual window was still right there. It felt pretty magical. I can envision a future where these headsets replace computers and monitors on a large scale for work. It could happen with Quest 5 or Apple Vision Air. When that happens, VR gaming might finally take off as hardware becomes widely popular. But until then, if you're itching to try out VR or just curious about it, Quest 3 is a fantastic choice. Lastly, here's some Q&A. What games can Quest 3 play? Apart from Half-Life Alex and Beat Saber, consider trying The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners and Resident Evil 4. Asgard's Wrath 2 is included with the purchase of Quest 3, unlocking in December. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR is also launching next month. What's the price? The 128 gigabyte version of Quest 3 is priced at 499 US dollars. 512 gigabyte is 649. It's 1.5 times the Quest 2, but the upgrade is worth every penny. What if I wear glasses? You should fit regular sized glasses into the headset, but you can also choose customized prescription lenses, speaker or headphones. The speaker of Quest 3 has largely improved from Quest 2. You can always go to headphones for better audio quality. How's the battery? The headset can be used for two and a half hours per charging. The battery compartment of the controller now features a convenient release button. Should I upgrade to Quest 3 if I've already had Quest 2? If it's collecting dust, consider selling it. If it's not, consider selling it first and then getting Quest 3. 